Could this be an indication that cruising is getting closer than we might think? I'm going to give you all of the details in this video coming up ahead. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now in this video, we have a lot of cruise news and interesting cruise stories and tidbits that I do want to share with you. So we're gonna be talking about new protocols by Royal Caribbean. I'm gonna give you all of the details of that because I don't think it got as much coverage as it probably should have. And does this indicate that we are getting closer to cruising? I will let you know why. We also have more vaccine protocols for more cruise lines. What does this mean for family cruise lines? We're going to talk about that as well. We also have a new exciting cruise ship and many firsts. We have some good news for the cruise industry and we have an update on record-breaking cruise event that you can actually be part of in 2022. Now, if you do like this video, if you find it helpful or informative in any way, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. We are now over 5,000 subscribers and I am thankful for every single view and every single subscriber. Let's get started. So I'm going to be sharing with you the Royal Caribbean new protocols in just a minute because I think that they are super important but I did want to start off with what is I guess the new controversy for cruising in 2021 and cruising going forward. It used to be formal night, it used to be gratuities and now it does seem to be vaccinations. Well we've heard from another cruise line, the biggest cruise line so far, the most notable and that is Crystal Cruises is mandating vaccines for all of its passengers when cruising does restart with them. And it does look like it's going to be crew as well. But let's talk about passengers for just a moment. They do say that they recognize that this will mean that some people will not be able to cruise with them. That includes children who will not be able to cruise with them because they cannot have the vaccine if they are under 18, at least at this point at the time that I am filming this video. Well, they say there's absolutely no exceptions. Now, what they do say is by the time that they restart cruising, they think it is going to be very likely that people who do want to have a vaccine will be able to do so. Now, for people who don't want to cruise and get a vaccine or aren't able to get a vaccine, you could either defer your cruise that is in 2021 to another time, or you could also ask for a refund as long as it's before 60 days before the cruise. Now that we're seeing several cruise lines go this route, and we think that countries may go this route, asking people to be vaccinated before visiting, is this going to be something that we're going to see on all cruise lines? It does seem like we're heading that way, but it does beg the question, what is going to happen to cruise lines that are much more family orientated or even attract multi-generational travelers? So this includes Royal Caribbean and Carnival and Disney, of course, and Norwegian Cruise Line, but it also includes cruise lines like Princess and Celebrity that do attract multi-generational travelers. So let me know what you think, please, in the comments below. We definitely do need to talk about this. So now let's talk cruise cancellations and when cruises might just sail again, because we did get some indications. So firstly, new cruise cancellations came this week from Norwegian Cruise Line that canceled all the way through the end of May 2021. And we had Viking that soon followed suit as well. Now, we did have some news from Carnival Cruise Lines, and they did something a little bit interesting. What they did is they, first of all, did state that they recognize that they do not have a specific timeline of when they know that cruising is going to resume. Of course, they're working with the CDC. We know that this is an arduous process. However, what they've said is given that, given that uncertainty and that people do want to have options, what they're doing is they are allowing people, it does depend, I think, on the itinerary that you have, but on the most part, if your cruise is booked anywhere between um, May all the way through the end of July 2021, you have a couple of options. Firstly, you can decide to keep your cruise booked as is, and that includes making the final payment as well. And if you do that, you will get an additional $100 onboard credit if it does sail. So that is definitely something good if you plan to cruise anyway. But if you do want the option of canceling, you can actually do that. And up until the end of March, you can cancel your cruise and you can get a 100% refund. Now, what could this mean? Could it mean that Carnival just really doesn't think that cruises are going to resume till August? Or could it mean, like I've seen some speculation, that Carnival is trying to reduce the amount of people that are on its cruises that really don't want to go and genuinely give options? We know that when they do restart, they're going to have to restart at a reduced capacity. So 
Could that be part of it? And of course, we have to look at the money situation. By Carnival offering an incentive to people to keep their cruises booked, including making final payments, that is a way for the cruise line to continue to receive funds, which are, of course, badly needed right now as they continue with this pause in cruising. So now let's talk about what I think is really kind of the biggest story of the week, but it really went under the radar because what Royal Caribbean did with their new policies or their new protocols is they actually put it into the cruise ticket contract, which makes sense because this is what we're all agreeing to when we go on a cruise, right? And it's the same thing like if we go on a flight, we have to agree to the contract. It's the same thing for the cruise. Now, usually I'll be honest, I don't look through the whole thing, but in this case, I did see on Royal Caribbean blog that they did share all of this information. So I went on the cruise ticket contract to see exactly what was included in it. And really a lot of the things, a lot of the new protocols that were included were a lot of the things that Carnival had actually released and then retracted um, just about a couple of weeks ago in terms of their new protocols for when they get back to cruising. So this included some of the things like capacity controls. This included, of course, social distancing and masks and all of those things. It did include also a recommendation to see a physician before going on a cruise to see if it's recommended, a recommendation to visit the CDC's website. So all of this is, of course, very important. Now, I do think the way that Carnival had um, released it, the wording was not exactly in the legalese that Royal Caribbean used, but it definitely seems to be very, very similar. Now, I do think that there is some good news to this, though. I wonder if this just means that we are actually getting back to being closer to cruising. And I do think that Royal Caribbean likely had to have this approved by the CDC. And we know that Carnival said that they released it prematurely. It wasn't finalized, but perhaps they are just waiting to make sure that the CDC agrees with it before posting. Now, I should mention that I did take a look on other websites, other cruise lines, including Norwegian, Princess, Celebrity, uh, Carnival, and I did not see any changes that were noticeable to me in their cruise ticket contract. If you do, please let me know in the comments below. So now let's shift gears and look at some really good news for the cruise industry. So let's first talk about Port Miami. Now, Port Miami is partnering with six cruise line brands and the Florida Light and Power Company to provide shore power to the cruise lines. This is something that's actually really good news because it's good for the environment, it's good for sustainability, and this is really good for the future of the cruise industry, and it's good for, of course, the city of Miami. Now, what the city of Miami says, or the mayor says, is not only will Miami be the cruise capital of the world, but it will be a leader in sustainability. Now, if you're wondering what shore power does and why it's important, well, it allows the cruise ships to actually shut off those large diesel engines and to be able to connect to this power source through kind of like a separate transformer just for the cruise ships and it really goes directly to the cruise ships themselves and it doesn't really affect the local power source for the city of Miami. Now looking ahead to later in 2021, there is a brand new cruise ship coming out that I am very excited about. It is the MSC Seashore. Now outwardly, it looks very similar to the MSC Seaside, an incredibly beautiful cruise ship, but it is its own class of ship in that it is an Evo class ship. So it has really some innovations, new technologies on the cruise ship and really some newly designed spaces that include areas um, that really connect the passenger with the sea and with those warmer destinations being able to spend even more time outside. But it does have some new technologies. This includes an air purification system that is the first of its kind um, on a cruise ship. As well, they have some new technologies that are just helpful for the environment and for sustainability. So this is definitely a trend going forward for cruise lines. Now they say that in terms of the wastewater on the cruise ship, they're able to purify the wastewater to the point that they can actually do better than a lot of facilities that are shoreside or on land. So definitely something really good. Now I should mention that I've never cruised on MSC, but this whole past year or so, or the last few months that we've seen how MSC has been cruising throughout this whole time, this health crisis, and doing such a great job with their protocols and still having a high satisfaction rating from guests, well, that definitely makes me feel like I do want to sail on MSC as soon as I can book another cruise. Please let me know if that makes you feel the same way as well in the comments below. Now, I also do want to talk briefly about what happens if somebody 
is diagnosed with this virus on board and how does the cruise line handle it? Well, just this past week, we did see that on the MSC Virtuosa, there was somebody that was a potential case of this virus on board and the cruise line handled it the way they were supposed to because of course there are protocols for this. So even though there was some different news footage about this or some news articles, I do have a friend and somebody who's a member of the Life Well Cruise Facebook community who did share pictures and his experience on that very same cruise. He said that protocols were followed. He felt very safe on board. This is actually his second cruise on MSC since they've resumed sailing during this pandemic. And he has nothing but good things to say about the cruise experience, how much fun he's had, how enjoyable it has been, but as well, how safe the cruise has been as well. So I do think that that's something important. The passenger was disembarked from the cruise ship and the cruise went on. And I think this is something good in how we would expect and hope that it would be handled on cruises going forward. But please let me know what you do think. Now, would you have been interested in being on a record-breaking cruise? I sure would. Well, in October of 2019, Fred Olson Cruises with the ship called the Braemar actually went through the Corinth Canal and that is a pretty small canal in Greece. You might have seen the footage of this cruise ship just practically squeezing through this canal. It is the largest cruise ship to have ever gone through the canal, even though it's only, well, a little bit over 900 passengers. Well, that very same cruise that happened in October 2019, they're going to repeat going through the Corinth Canal in April 2022. And if you'd like to be on that cruise, it is a really interesting itinerary. It's going to go to Athens. It's going to go to Catacolon, the place where the first, very first Olympics happened to Crete, to Rhodes. So that's something that you might want to look into for your cruising future. Now, I'd love to know what you think of these stories. If you do think, we're getting back to those vaccines, if you do think that this presents perhaps a dilemma for cruise lines that are more family orientated, do you think that there will be any exceptions? Do you think that this is definitely the future? Please let me know what you think in the comments below because so far we haven't heard from any of the major cruise lines that vaccinations for passengers are required, but we may just hear about that soon. So if you did like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. See you in the next video and happy future cruising.